of living. The kingdom of God is a way of conducting life. Is a way of thinking that is in line with the word of God. And that gives happiness to the human kind. Amen. Near you. 
chapter 17 chapter 17 verse 20 to 21 17 20 to 21 the Bible says Luke 17 once on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God will come Jesus replied the kingdom of I mean Jesus replied the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed no will be saved here is it or oh, there it is because the kingdom of God is in your midst another version they say the kingdom of God is in you hallelujah Amen. praise God do you mind greeting the brother and the sister next to you and tell him and tell her that she is just welcoming the presence of God Remember, the person who is seated next to you is the brother that you are going to inherit the kingdom of God with. So you better <laughs> getting used to him or to her because that is the face that you'll be seeing for the eternity. So you better get used to that person. Praise God. Amen. I think when you go through all the scripture that we read, there is one word that has been often coming back is kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. So my message this morning is titled, Let Your Kingdom Come. Let Your Kingdom Come. Hallelujah. And it is so important for the kingdom of God to come in your life. It is so important for the kingdom of God to come in your business, to come in your marriage, to come in your place, to come in your life. You need the kingdom of God to come. It is so important. The Lord Jesus he was asked by his disciple to teach them how to pray. The disciple, the soul, the disciple of John, the Baptist, they were praying, and then they felt that they would, they, they needed also to be taught how to pray. And when Jesus is teaching them how to pray, he tells them, he tells them, this is how you should pray. When you pray, say, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. And he continues to say, Let your kingdom come. Another version is let your kingdom be established. Let the kingdom, your kingdom, be established. And let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus himself, after teaching them that, in the very, very same chapter, further, he said to them that you should seek first what? The kingdom of God. So you can see how important the kingdom of God was to him. Because he told them when you pray, say, let your kingdom come. And he said, seek that kingdom. Because if you enter that kingdom, if you do not have that kingdom, it is a problem. And you and me this morning, we are going to go through the scriptures so that you can learn about the kingdom of God. And why we should seek it. The Bible says, seek the kingdom of God. Seek. You know, to seek is to search and search again until you find. That is seeking. Seeking is not a superficial search or research. When you seek, it means that you commit yourself. It means that you go deep until you find it. I mean, you do everything that is necessary for you to get what you're looking for. That is to seek. To seek is not to Lift up two or three paper and get tired. No, it's to give yourself entirely until you get what you are looking for. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, first of all, I want to remove first some theological confusion that is emanating into uh, some doctrine and some religions where they say the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. There is absolutely no difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. It's just a semantic differences. And it is coming because people who wrote this, they were addressing different people. Like Matthew was speaking directly to the Jewish. And in the Jewish culture, they don't pronounce the name of God. They don't pronounce it. 
God, Yahweh, did not pronounce his name. So when he was writing to them, he couldn't write the kingdom of God. Because then they can't pronounce God. So he said, the kingdom of heaven. The very same report that brother Matthew gave of the speaking of Jesus when he's speaking about the kingdom of God. He did not say kingdom of God, he said kingdom of heaven. Why? Because of the people he was talking to. But when brother Luke or brother Mark speaks about the same a report about the same um, story, he speaks about the kingdom of God. Because he was not speaking to the Jewish directly. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? So, you should not be confused when somebody speaks about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God and you think that there is any difference. Absolutely no difference. It's the same thing. So, if I say the kingdom of God and I say the kingdom of heaven, I mean the same thing. I will be meaning the same thing. Hallelujah. So, that being said, we can now proceed. Now, beloved, Jesus said that the kingdom of God is among you. He was not telling them that the kingdom of God will come. So in the time of Israelite, when Jesus was walking around them, he was already telling them that the kingdom of God is with you, is with you, is within you. He's not far, he's already in you. It's not something that you can go and look for it far. It is already in you. Is within you, is among you. The, we are in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is already among you. Now, beloved, the kingdom of God needs to be defined. But before we to define the kingdom of God, I want you to understand that Jesus wants us before to enter heaven. Now, this is another concept. Before us to enter heaven, to seduce a maximum of people. Or maybe let me make it better. To gain the maximum of people to come with us in heaven. Now, for those people to come with us in heaven, we need to present them something that is going to convince them, that's going to make to, to give them happiness to follow us. That's gonna make them to see that uh, what we are we are offering them is better than what the world is offering them. What we are offering them is better than what other people are offering them. When you go to the market, you look at the offer. You know, I used to go to do shopping with my wife, we will walk. We will walk seriously. So she will tell me, we will walk because we want to see the best offer. So we, we see the product here, we leave it. We see here, we leave it. We see because we want to, not only to get the good quality, but the best offer as well. Hallelujah. And when we find the best offer, we are going to buy from the best seller who is having the best offer. It's just logic. Hallelujah. So he asked the children of God, People are not going to follow us if what we are offering is not better than what they have. Amen. Why would you like a millionaire to come and sit here in this heat if what you are offering him is not better than the million that is having? What do you think that a doctor who is having a good life will come here and sit with you here when what you, what you are offering him is not better than what he has already? So what we are offering need to be better, need to be best than what people have. And people shall see it and will be attracted by it and then will come and ask, can I have what you have? <coughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Beloved, people sometimes they don't follow us because what we have is not best, better than what they have. They don't see no, no reason to follow us. They don't see no need to follow us because what we offer, they will have it already. Honestly, I will give you money, but I have the money. So I will give you, if you follow us, our Jesus will bless you, but he feels that he is already blessed. You need to find out what they don't have and offer them what they don't have. And they will come to you because they will find it only to you. Then they will follow you. Hallelujah. So what people they don't have is the kingdom of God. They don't have the kingdom of God. They have other things. They have money. Money is not the kingdom of God. They have qualification. Qualification is not the kingdom of God. They have all those things. But they do not have the kingdom of God. And I can assure you as I want to sit now, the kingdom of God is what we need. That's why Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And other things shall be given to you or shall be added unto you. So for Jesus, the most important thing that somebody should seek is what? Is the kingdom of God. 
The most important that you should seek today as we come to church is to seek to get the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God is not a place because many people don't speak about the kingdom of God. They are imagining a place. They are imagining heaven. Heaven is not the kingdom of God. That is not what we're speaking about because heaven is not on earth. Heaven is there in heaven. We are talking about something that people shall get here on earth. Something beautiful that they shall get here in, on earth and they shall seek and they shall look for and they shall follow and they shall come after. Hallelujah. Amen. So the kingdom of God is not a place. The kingdom of God is not a country. The kingdom of God is not a geographic place somewhere where we can tell people, okay, let's get a visa and go to that place. It's not a I mean a country or a city. The kingdom of God is a way of living. The kingdom of God is a way of conducting life. It is a way of thinking that is in line with the word of God and that gives happiness to the human kind. Yesterday in the retreat, I was retreat with, with, uh, with, the, the, with the, ser the servants and the workers. I was telling them that when Adam and Eve sinned against God, they discovered that they were naked. They went beyond the trees so that they can try to hide themselves. God came looking for them. He asked them, where are you? They said, we are hiding because we are naked. Then the Bible said, God killed a lamb and took the skin of that lamb and covered them. After covering them, they were now able to walk again. I mean, their lost dignity is found by the act of God of covering them. And I told the workers that this is, it was already showing the work that Jesus Christ will do at the cross. By his death, he will take his skin, which is his righteousness. Remember, the, bless, the breastplate of righteousness is on the chest. The righteousness. He will take his righteousness and cover us. Beloved, money cannot bring back the dignity of the person. If it was so, those rich people would not kill themselves. Have you ever heard? Do you know the story of Whitney Houston? Rich. Do you know the story of Michael Jackson? Rich. What happened to him? Killed himself. Because people always think that if you have money, people think that if I have money, I will have peace. Money will not go give you peace. The more you have money, the more you will find reason for you to protect yourself. You see now, you don't have enough money. You are coming to sit here. The moment you become rich, the moment you become too much rich, the first thing you look for, you look for bodyguard. Why are you looking for bodyguard? Even if there's nobody who is um, threatening you, but you look for bodyguard. What is the reason I'm looking for bodyguard? Because Money does not necessarily bring peace. It brings trouble. It brings uneasiness. It brings insecurity. That money that shall bring you safety, the money does not bring you safety anymore. You're not going to live with us anymore. You'll go and look your house very far. And you'll build very high walls. Why? Because you are seeing yourself like, hey, with this money, with this money, I don't have peace. Hallelujah. Amen. With this lot of money that I have, there is absolutely no, no peace. Beloved, you need to understand that peace can only come from God. When man can find happiness, it is only when he enter in the kingdom of God. If you don't enter the kingdom of God, whatever other kingdom you are going to enter will never give you peace. Amen. With whatever other kingdom, you can enter the kingdom of scientists and tell yourself that I am the greatest scientist, I am the greater knowledge of everything, you can enter that one. You can enter whatever kingdom where you can enter. If it is not the kingdom of God, I can assure you, you will never find peace. Because in the heart of a human kind, there is an emptiness that only the maker of humankind can fill that emptiness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In your heart, there is an emptiness that only God can fill that emptiness.
emptiness. That's why you see people, they are going after alcohol. They are drinking alcohol every Friday. But the following Friday will go and drink again. They'll go after sex. He'll look, he'll look for sex, but he will never find fulfillment. Because those things, drugs, they can only make you addict, but they will never give you happiness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. People go after those things because they think that they will find a certain comfort, a certain happiness and easiness in it. But they're not going to find it. They only find dependence on it. But they don't find the true happiness. Because the true happy happiness is when a person enters the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the kingdom of God is a way of living. Jesus in John chapter 18, verse 36, that when people came to arrest him, he told them that my kingdom is not on, of this earth. Because if my kingdom was of, of this earth, my subject will come and fight for me. So he told them clearly that the kingdom he was speaking about, it was not a kingdom of this place, a place somewhere in the UK. There are young people who feel that, you know, the day I will just enter UK, my problem will finish. The, the way I will just enter Canada, the, my problem, beloved, in Canada, there are people who are sleeping on the streets. You all know that? In the UK, there are people who are jobless. In the UK. In uh, Saudi Arabia, there are people who are killing themselves with a lot of money in bank because the problem of human being it is not money the problem of human being it is to reconcile with their maker Amen. hallelujah Amen. when they reconcile with their maker then they receive the true peace now this kingdom of God is a way of living is a, a lifestyle that is dictated by the spirit of God or by God or by the maker of heaven and earth your maker so it is a way of living, a way of thinking, a way of seeing, a way of apprehending the world. That makes you happiness. Or that brings you happiness. Beloved, this is the reason why when a person is in the kingdom of God and the other one is not in the kingdom of God, they can face the same situation or they can have the same problem. But the way they deal with the problem differ. You know why? Because the way they see the problem differ as well. A problem that kills somebody or a problem that takes somebody to psychiatric hospital. Both of them have lost their husband. But this one ended up in depression. The other one still singing. And then you ask yourself, what has happened? It is because one is having another way of seeing the situation. What happened to you? It happened to me as well. But... It has broken you, but I'm still standing. You know why? Because I have a different way of seeing the very same situation. I have another view of the situation. And this is what human beings need. They need to have the view of God. They need to see things the way God sees them. They need to do things the way God wants them to do them for them to have happiness. Jesus was telling them, he told Jerusalem, he said, Jerusalem, so many times I wanted to give you peace, but you didn't want because you didn't, you didn't receive the kingdom of God. You were looking at things of your, with your own eyes, with your, your own thinking. And what a pity to be in the church of the living God and to have not the view of God, but the view of the world. There are people who are calling themselves Christian, carrying the Bible, but when problems come to them, they don't apprehend problem according to God. They apprehend problem according to themselves. That's why you're end you ending up in depression. That's why you're ending up in problems. Because you don't see things the way God sees them. Because you don't live the way God wants you to live. Remember we said the kingdom of God is a way of living. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that is dictated by God. It's a, you see things according to God's faith. Let me give you an example. One day... There was a man of God, Elijah. Elijah, in the morning, his servant wakes up and, turned it, and, and went out and saw that the entire mountain was filled with soldiers. Soldiers who came to actually arrest Elijah. And the Bible says he saw that. And then he went into distress. He went into depression. He started crying. He went to the man of God and said, Man of God, we are going to die now because we are surrounded by a lot of people around us. We are going to 
to die. Now the man of God, the very same situation, the very same reality, but he had a different view of the reality. When he went out, instead of him seeing all the soldiers who were surrounding them, him, he saw what God was seeing. He said to God, he said to the servant, he said, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. When did he see that? He had the vision of God. He had the way, he saw things the way God sees them. I pray for you to see your problem the way God sees that problem. I pray for you to see your situation the way God sees that situation. Do not see it the way it presents itself. And he prayed and said, Lord, open the eyes of this gentleman. And the eyes was open, he was now full of joy. You see, when you enter in the kingdom of God, when you see things the way God sees them, it brings you peace. <laughs> it gives you peace in the midst of adversity. When everybody else is crying, you, you will be rejoicing because you see things differently. People will ask you, but you don't have job. How are you rejoicing? Because I see the way God sees, not the way you, you see. You, you see joblessness, but me, I see opportunity for the hand of God to work. When Goliath was standing every morning in front of the people of Israel, insulting them, threatening them, when Elia and all the brothers of, of David, they were coming and all the other soldiers and even the king saw, when they were coming and looking at Goliath, a three meter person, imagine three meter, three meter person, somebody who's three meter, and a man of war, a giant who was used to war, they were only looking at the reality. But when David came and looked at that person, he did not seem too big for him to be beaten up. But he saw him too big for his stone to miss him. He said, no, this guy is too big. I can even throw anyhow and I'm not going to miss him. Because it's too big for me. It's too big, I'm not going to miss him. My brother, your problem is too big for it to be missed by your prayer. Let the stone of your prayer go to your problem and because the problem is too big, that problem cannot be missed by your prayer. Maybe it was small that you did not see it, but now your problem is too big. Then you can see it and you can pray for it. Our problem, we haven't entered the kingdom of God. We haven't, that's why Jesus said, seek the kingdom. Because if you don't seek the kingdom, you'll be seeing things according to yourself. And if you see things according to yourself, you will be in a lot of distress and a lot of problems. Hallelujah. Amen. The kingdom of God. He said when you pray, say, let your kingdom come. In other words, when you pray, say, let your way of seeing things, let your way of thinking, let your way of apprehending the problems and the world come so that I may see them not on my own eyes, but I may see them in the eyes of God. Amen. God knows how many nights, good nights you would have had if you only saw things according to God. You lost many nights because you saw things according to yourself. You saw things according to what the doctor said. Because the doctor gave an, um, you know, a verdict and said it's a cancer. It is finished. You are going to die. You know, I remember a true story. One of the person that uh, somebody that I, I, I was working with came to me and said, Pastor, my husband has been diagnosed for the doctors who are here. They will know how aggressive is this cancer. He said, my husband has been diagnosed with a pancreatic cancer. The cancer of the pancreas. Beloved, it's one of the aggressive cancers. It doesn't give you more than six months. You go. When you, and usually you get it, discovered late. And the husband was discovered with that. And diabetes as well. Now she told me that, hey, sh the, be, be honest with me. My husband's going to die. I said, no. Your husband will only go to die if God said that it's time for him to die. Amen. If it's not yet the time for God for, uh, for him to die, whatever sickness he can get is not going to die. Amen. We prayed. You know, I can tell you it's more than six months. Every time I see that lady, she tells me, oh, my husband is becoming better. He's becoming better every day. He's not even walking. He's back to work with that very same cancer. Beloved, the way you see things with the demand, how you will apprehend those things. Amen. If you see things as fatality, you don't see it according to the kingdom of God. I'm going to tell you about the principles of the kingdom. One of the principles of the kingdom, impossible become possible in the kingdom. Amen. If you are in the kingdom of God, there are principles of impossible that become possible. In the kingdom of earth, there are those words, impossible, fatality, 
sickness that will kill. For you to get job, you must have qualification. That is in the kingdom of the world. But when you enter in the kingdom of God, there's another principle. There the principle is other principle that I'm going to talk about right now. So you understand how important it is for you to enter in the kingdom of God. To stop being in your kingdom, in the kingdom of the world, which is a kingdom of condemnation, which is a kingdom of problems, which is a kingdom of fatality, which is a kingdom of blockage, which is a kingdom of limitation, for you to enter in the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of possibilities. And Jesus spent three full years with his disciples teaching them about the kingdom of God. If you see how many times Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God, said the kingdom of God is like this, the kingdom of God is like this. He was always telling them about the kingdom for them to understand that you are in the kingdom and there are principles of the kingdom and you shall not live according to other kingdoms, you shall live according to the kingdom of God. Of course, for you to live according to the kingdom of God, you need to enter into that kingdom. The ticket for you to enter in that kingdom is to be born again. The Lord said, the Lord Jesus said in John chapter 3, uh, verse 3 and verse 5, he said that if you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't see it. You can't see the way God sees things if unless you enter in the kingdom of God. And you enter the kingdom of God by becoming born again. If you have made Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, then you have entered the kingdom of God. Then you have the ability to see things the way God sees things. Hallelujah. Now that kingdom of God has principles. And those are the principles that I like. Because the principles of the kingdom of God are different from the principles of the other kingdom. We have the kingdom of darkness. We have the kingdom of the world. We have the kingdom of UK, United Kingdom. We have the kingdom of Zulu. We have the kingdom of Pedi. We have the kingdom of Venda. We have other kingdom. They have also other principles. But we have also the kingdom of God that has other principles. Those other kingdoms are kingdoms with limitation. But the kingdom of God is a kingdom without limitation. It's a kingdom with possibilities. You need to understand when you enter the kingdom of God, you have entered a kingdom of possibilities. Meaning, the impossible become possible. Jesus came to Mary and spoke to Mary. And, uh, and uh, Mary said, how is it going to happen? Because I'm a virgin. How can I carry a baby being a virgin? Come on, angel. It cannot be possible. Now, the angel said to her, it is impossible if you are in that kingdom. But I'm going to take you in another kingdom where your impossibility can become possibilities. Yeah. And she took Mary, she said, the spirit of the living God will cover you with a shadow. And it will, it will make it possible. I pray for the spirit of the Lord to cover your life. Yeah. To make it possible. Yeah. To make what you think that is impossible to become possible. Yeah. To make what you have been struggling with to become easy. Amen. To make what was make giving you sleepless night to give you quiet night. Amen. Because the principle of this kingdom is a principle of possibility. Amen. In the kingdom of God, things are possible. I said things are possible. Beloved, let me bring to your attention that I am not a politician to bring you demagogy. I am not bringing a demagogic uh, talk I am telling you the truth from the word of God. You see, politicians, they will bring you the mango. They will tell you, I will do this for you to vote them. I am not looking for your vote yet. I am telling you the word of God. Because people who trusted the kingdom of God, who entered in the kingdom of God, they saw the hand of God. Mary saw the hand of God. She carried the baby Jesus. And in this church, we have seen many people who saw, who came here to give her the testimony. What was said impossible became possible. Hallelujah. What was said possible? There are people that told them that you will never find a job in Rustenburg. Yeah, you will never find a job. Today, they are working in Rustenburg. They bought a house in Rustenburg. Where they told them that it is impossible. Because the kingdom of the world, the kingdom of darkness, is a kingdom of condemnation.
nation is a kingdom of limitation, is a kingdom of problems. So the first principle in this kingdom, impossible become possible. Impossible become possible. So if you are in the kingdom of God, you should not be afraid of what people can say, of what your body can say, of what the doctor can say, of what whoever can say, because it is only a saying of a man. It is only a saying of a, a man. A saying of a man has an expiry date. A saying of a man has an expiry date. The saying of God can still change whatever man says. People may say things about you. People may say things about your career. They may say things about your situation. That's what people are saying. What God has said. As long as God hasn't said it, it is not yet certain. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if your biological clock has said that it is enough. The biological clock of our mother Sarah said that it, she is menopause already. The biological clock said it is finished for this woman. But God came and said, even though the biological clock was at midnight, God bring it back in the morning again. That's why Brother Zachariah is saying that uh, with God, in the evening, the sun will shine again. In the evening, the sun will shine again. That I'm telling somebody, it's not yet late with you. Yeah. Enter the kingdom of God. Live according to God's principles. It is not yet late, yet late with you. You think that it is late because you compare yourself with other people. Because you are, somebody told you that it is late. But your maker heaven said that it is late. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid it is not late. Don't be afraid it is not yet the end. It is not yet the end until the maker of heaven and earth decide that it is the end. Amen. The second principle in the kingdom of God is the principle of faith. In the kingdom of God, we live by faith. We don't live by sight. We don't live by what we see. We live by what God says. Even if what we see is different or is contrary to what God says, we live but by what God says. Because we know if God has said it, then he will do it. If you have said it, then you will do it. You know the song? If God has said it, then he will do it. That's why we live by faith. The Bible says in the book of uh, Hallelujah. Let's go to Roman chapter 10 verse 17. We are not living by sight. We are not living by what we see. Beloved, be careful with what you are seeing. What you are seeing is so much deceiving. Do not put too much of your attention on what you see. Put too much of your attention on what God says. When you see something, the next question should be what God is saying about this situation. What God is saying about this problem. What God is saying about what I'm going through. Don't just be broken by what is happening to you. Because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of faith. And faith comes from what we are hearing. And the Bible says, what you should hear that will bring you a good faith should be the word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So, beloved, the, key, the second principle of the kingdom of God is a kingdom of faith. If you look in the Bible, every time Jesus was healing them, he was always, always telling them, go, your faith has done you well. He was always telling them. He did not just heal them like that. He was telling them that your faith has done you well. Now, in this kingdom, faith is the currency that we take to the market of the kingdom of God to pay charge everything that you need. There is a market in the kingdom of God. There is a market where everything is. And the Bible says that uh, he blessed us with all kinds of blessings. He blessed us 
with what? All kind of blessing. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. He blessed us with, with what? All kind of blessing. I want to bring to your attention, that's going to be the third principle of the kingdom, but I'm still on the second one. The third principle of the kingdom is a kingdom of provision. Everything it is provided. Hello? In the kingdom of God is a kingdom of what? Of provision. Everything it is provided. Oh my God. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of provision. You cannot enter in the kingdom of God and say, I don't have it here. It is not provided here for me. No, it is provided. That's why the owner, the king of the kingdom, when he was establishing his kingdom at the cross, he screamed, Tetelestai. It is done, my brother. He said, it is finished. I did it all. So he did it all so that you, when you come in the kingdom, you may find that everything it is already done for you in that kingdom. So when you enter the kingdom of God, you enter there knowing that this is a place of provision. But for you to get the provision, you need to have the currency. If you go to the market and you don't have the currency of the market, you're not going to buy. I told you the story of fear. One day we went to Nigeria with my wife and we arrived there. We were having rent in our pocket and we wanted to buy something. They said, no, we don't take rent. You must change it into Naira. We have been starting now, start looking for Naira. because We have money, but we couldn't use that money because it was a foreign currency. Hallelujah. So you need to understand in the kingdom of God, if you want to receive anything, somebody say anything. anything. And everything, you need to have the money of the kingdom. The money of the kingdom is called faith. The money of the kingdom is called faith. So the money of the kingdom will allow you to purchase everything because in the kingdom of God, everything is already here. Do we have marriage? Yes, we have marriage in the kingdom. Do we have a job? Yes, we have jobs. Do we have the fruit of the womb? We have it. Do we have this and that? We have it. There is absolutely nothing that we do not have in the kingdom of God. Amen. That's why I don't believe in the gospel of poverty. People think that, no, you know, blessed be the poor. No, Jesus never said, blessed be the poor. He said, blessed be the poor in spirit. In spirit, not poor. God doesn't like poverty. Jesus, the son of the living God, was made poor so that you can become rich. So you cannot continue to be poor. Poverty is a curse. Poverty is a problem. Poverty is blocking other people to follow Jesus. Because when they come to the city that you are in the poverty, they will tell you, where well, will I follow that Jesus? Is unable to bless yourself. You are suffering like this. You want me to follow that Jesus? Change that Jesus. Change the kingdom. Change the principle of the kingdom. Apply the principle. Your king has made you rich already. He has blessed you with all kind of... Maybe let me read it. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus. Who did what? Who blessed us. Where? In the heavenly realms. The heavenly realms in this kingdom. He blessed us in the heavenly realms with what? With every spiritual blessing in Christ. So we receive all the spirit of blessing. The problem, those blessings are spiritual. You, you are not spiritual, you are physical. You are material. So as long as the blessings are spiritual, you are not going to enjoy them. You better take them, transform them to the physical. Do not be like Africa. We have all the raw material unable to transform them. We are sitting on our tree. We are unable to make chair with our own tree. We are sitting on our diamond. We are unable to transform those diamonds. We are sitting on our gold. We are unable to transform our gold. We are sitting on our cacao. We are unable to make uh, to make chocolate with it. Chocolate must go first to France, then make chocolate and send it back to us. It is time for you to use your faith uh, to transform your raw material in the things that can use yourself. Transform them. That's why Africa needed people like Gaddafi. Like Muzel Oran, Muzel Kabir. People who came with vision, like Mandel, tell me that you must do it here. You must do it here. Why you are taking it here and you are sending it there? Bring whatever you do, do it here. Amen. When you will be president tomorrow, please don't make us suffer. Don't take our cacao 
Don't take our gold and take them again to London for it to be transformed. We have faith we can transform it in Africa so that ourselves can also enjoy it. It's the same thing with all the blessing God has given us. God has blessed you with all kind of blessing. Now for them to become physical, you need to take your faith that's going to transform the raw material to the finished product that you can use. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to receive anything from God. Without faith, you cannot enjoy. And many of us, we are struggling. We are suffering. We are saying, but you are children of God. Why am I suffering? I'm a child of God. Why this is happening? But you are suffering because of yourself. Because you don't have money. You don't have faith. If you want to have faith, go and listen to the word of God. Listen to the testimony. It will boost up your faith. You have enough currency to come and buy what you need in the market of the kingdom of God. Amen. You buy what you need in that market. Amen. Jesus used to tell them, your faith has done you well. So in, in, other, in other version, or in other way, those who were going without being healed, when they were going away, God, Jesus was also telling them, your lack of faith has done you bad. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Your lack of faith has done you bad. Yeah. And there are many people that their lack of faith has done them bad. Because you don't have faith. You don't have faith for trust. trust. Faith is trust in the Lord. It's trusting what God says. It's trusting the promises of God. It's trusting what God has promised. Because God will never lie. He will never lie to you. You are so much afraid to trust God. But you are trusting the driver of a taxi that takes you from here to Pretoria. Do you know that taxi driver? Do you even know if maybe he's drunk? Do you know that maybe he's having a fake driver's license? But you are trusting that person and you don't even know. Because you see other people getting into that taxi, you also you get it. And you, when you go to the taxi, you go to the back seat, they're nice and sleeping. You don't even check how he's driving. Because you trust him. You trust him because you find a bus at death takes you right. How can you not trust God who made heaven and earth? Amen. How can you not trust God who is giving you the breath of life every day? How can you not trust God who has worked you up this morning again? For you to trust when you are asking questions, what God did for me to trust him? What that taxi driver that you are giving your own life to him? What he has done to you for you to trust him? You don't even know him. You don't even greet him. Hallelujah. Amen. Try to go to that taxi driver. Before him to drive, you say, hey, Sir, can I please see your driver's license? Can I check if it's a genuine one before you to drive us? He's going to warn you. <laughs> and uh, you're not going to get into that taxi. And yet we know many are having fake many, many, many of them, they bought the, the, the driver's license. But we trust them. We trust the strangers. We trust the people who are not even trustworthy with our lives. Sometimes you go there, you like walking with your children. You go in that taxi, all your family will sit. You trust the taxi driver with all your family. You take them to the airplane. You don't even ask, pilot, can I please have your license? How many hours of, of, of flying do you have? But you trust him. You trust him. How can you not trust God? Why don't you trust God? Why do you have... Yeah. Why do you doubt God? Why do you doubt when it comes to God? Why do you think that maybe, maybe not? Recently, we were flying with my wife, and then the pilot told us, it's raining, so we're going to have some zone of turbulence. Now, we'll take off nicely. When we were there, they ah, told my wife, ah, this is what the pilot told us. We were going like this. So my wife was just calm. I was sure she was praying. Thinking about, hey, our church. Hey, our church. Hey. Hallelujah. Beloved, we did not even ask that pilot to show us. I did not even see that pilot. When I went and when I came back, I did not even see the pilot. I just hear him talking. Oh, we're going to do these hours of our. Jenny, and then 
the temperature and that airport is going to be this food. Just that. I don't even remember his name. But God, who has proven himself in the Bible, go and ask David, he will tell you he was thrown in the den of lion and that God closed the mouth of the lion. Go and ask him. The three Hebrews that were thrown in the, 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 the furnace of fire and he came with them dead. Go and ask Mama Sarah that she was more than 90 years old. But God gave her a boy, a baby boy. Go and ask Lazarus. He was dead four days ago. He brought him back to life. Who, which problem do you think that you have that God cannot bring back to life? Which issue that you have that you think that is more than what those people had? Go and ask Israel and Moshe. They were facing the Red Sea. And behind them, there was the entire army of Egypt. And God said, look them very well. This army, you no longer see them anymore. Amen. You're not going to see them any longer. Amen. God opened the Red Sea. They passed. So what situation do you think that God cannot? Your problem is you don't have faith. You don't have the money to pay charge. The problem is, if you have little money, you can only buy as much. If you have little faith, you can only buy as much. If you want to buy more, lift up your faith. Amen. Can you please, with all the respect, tell your neighbor, never lift up your faith. Amen. Tell him again, never lift up your faith. Because you can only buy as much as your faith is allowing you. You can only receive as much as your faith is giving you. It's as much as your faith is allowing you. You cannot get above what your faith is allowing you. It's like if you go to the market, you want people to give you more than your money can allow you to get. You can only get as much as your money can get you. Sometimes you go to the market for something nice. You ask how much? 3,000. You look at it in the pocket, you have 2,000. My brother, you can do that negotiation. You can negotiate, cry to that person. Maybe you go to 2.8. But you're not going to give it to 2,000, I'm telling you. Because you can only get as much as your money can afford. You can only get as much as your faith can afford. Lift up your faith. Lift up your faith before God. Lift up your faith. The more you have faith, the more you can pay charge things. A rich person in the kingdom of God is a person of more faith. But if you have more faith, you must listen to more the word of God. You listen to the word of God, it will increase your faith. Listen to the testimony, it will increase your faith. Listen to what God did before, it will increase your faith. It will help you to purchase more things in the market of the kingdom of God. Because in that market, everything is dead. In the market, everything is dead. I said in the market, everything is dead. In the market of God, in the market of the kingdom of God, everything it is there. Everything it is there. Whatever you need, it is in that market. All it is needed is your faith. Is your money to purchase it. Hallelujah. Because of time, I am going to stop there. Maybe next Sunday, we'll go to the other principles of the kingdom. Maybe, let, me, let me quickly, in five minutes, introduce you to this third principle. The kingdom of God is another principle. It's a principle of declaration. I don't want to let you go without that. A principle of declaration. The Bible says, we believe that why we spoke. We believe that why we spoke. In the kingdom of God, it's important to declare. Declare. Because when you declare, you are making things happen. When you declare, you are making things happen. It's a, a principle of declaration. What you want to see happening, you must declare it. Because when you are declaring what you want to see happening, you will end up believing what you are declaring. And you end up being yourself what you declare. And it will happen in your life. I'm not going to die. Then you declare. I will not die. I will live. I will testify the goodness of the Lord. When he was talking about that, he was surrounded by the king Saul and his army, but he's declaring, I'm not going to die. I will live. I will testify the goodness of the Lord. Declare things in your life. This kingdom is a kingdom of declaration. The Bible says that they saw Peter and, and I mean, they saw Paul and, uh, 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 People are receiving the Holy Spirit. Sons and wonders were happening. Then Simon the magician came. He said, please, can I buy?
find this gift. So that me also, if I declare things upon people, it shall happen. They told him, you don't receive the kingdom with money. You don't buy the gift of God with money. Hallelujah. It's a kingdom of declaration. Declare things upon your life. Don't declare the negativity that you are declaring over your life. Hey, I'm going to die. Me, hey, I'm not going to get married. Me, hey, I'm going to die. Hey, me, oh, I'm not going to wake. Hey, me, hey. You declare wrong things. That's why you end up believing in the negativity that you are declaring. Change your declaration. Declare good things right now. Declare good things upon your life. Declare positivity upon your life. Declare good things upon your children. Declare good things upon your country. Stop cursing South Africa. Stop cursing the president. It is time for you to declare that ESCO will go better. That ESCO will go better. Don't just be negative and negative. When there is no shedding, what do you feel? You, you are not getting that. You are also suffering from no shedding. Also. So why you want only to declare negative things? It is time for the church to declare good things now. We will make it in South Africa. Our economy will stand up. Our politicians will become, they will no longer going to be corrupted. Declare those things sir, and believe in what you are declaring. Remember, God say, I say you are God. You are yet you are dying like merry men. You are God. God is God because he declares things and things are happening. Declare things. Declare upon your life. Declare, declare upon your situation. Declare upon whatever you are doing. Learn to declare. This is a principle of the kingdom of God. It's a kingdom of Declaration. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet so that you can pray. And one of the ways of declaring things in your life, it is in prayer. In prayer is one of the ways we are using to declare things. Do not declare negativity in your life anymore. When you are yourself in your bedroom, look yourself in the mirror. And tell yourself, here is a new millionaire in Rustenberg, in the name of Jesus. Declare, here is the next person to get married in Bellingwood Family Church. Here is the next person to carry a baby in this church. Declare what you want to see happening. Declare, here is the, the contract that I'm signing. Here is the next contract that I'm signing. Declare those things. Do not just declare negative things in your life. You are not a failure. You are a winner because it made you a winner. Stop declaring negative things. Believe in what God says. Faith does not make things easy, but it makes things possible. He may be hard as you are saying with them right now. Those things may be hard as they are right now. But it doesn't mean that faith cannot make them possible. They may be as hard as they are. But faith. And faith in God alone makes the things possible. Faith makes things possible. Faith makes things happening. blessing to become physical blessing. Faith makes the invisible blessing to become visible blessing and palpable blessing.
You can't trust him, my brother. There are people before you trusted God. They will never be put to shame. God is not going to start by putting you to shame now. He, he is the God. Hallelujah. He stands and uh, he accomplishes his promises. Oh, we do, we do the same. You do the same. You do the same. Do not give up. Do not become negative. Remember the principle of the kingdom of God. Principle of declaration. Declare, declare. Jesus, I'm choosing to live not by sight, 